Well, here's an interesting question. How come if you take a chair which has a plastic seat and metal legs in a cold room, if you sit on the chair, it doesn't feel cold, but if you touch the metal legs, they really do. Aren't they at the same temperature? Well, yes, they really are. So what's going on here? The metal, of course, is a very good conductor of heat. So as soon as we touch it, it conducts heat away from our fingers, and therefore we feel cold. The plastic is not such a good conductor of heat. But maybe the better way to think about this is instead of thinking about cold, let's think about heat and cakes. I've just baked a cake here in an aluminum pan. And I had it in the oven at the uh, appropriate temperature, which was uh, 452 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you know that you can reach into the oven and touch the cake to see whether or not it is done. No problem there. But if you reach in and touch the metal pan, you immediately recoil in horror as your fingers burn. What's going on? Obviously, in the oven, the cake and the metal pan are at the same temperature. But of course, there's a difference in heat conduction. The cake does not conduct heat very well. It does not transfer the heat to the finger, but the aluminum pan does. So it's not only a question of temperature, it is a question of how well the material transfers heat. And this connects to the second part of the question that we had here, and that is, how is it in the winter that if you happen to lick a piece of metal, it will immediately freeze to the tongue, but you can lick wood quite happily? Well, here's what happens. If the temperature is low enough, as soon as you lick the metal, the metal will conduct heat out of the saliva. So the temperature of the saliva drops, it freezes instantly, gluing the tongue to the metal. The wood does not conduct heat as well, and therefore we're reasonably safe licking wood. And this really does happen. I came across a fascinating story from Alaska of a gentleman who with his young son went to a play at a local high school, and when they came out, for some reason known only to the young boy, he licked the metal railing. His tongue immediately froze to the metal. This, of course, disturbed his father a great deal, who tried everything to remove the tongue, but was unable to do so. And then he thought about it, thought about it, and he realized that he did have a resource that he could use. So he began to urinate on the affected area, and of course the problem was almost immediately solved. The uh, father was relieved, the uh, boy's tongue was loosened, although I suspect the boy was speechless.